You might think you know all about Shimano Di2, or you might think you don't know much at all. But either way, I'm gonna tell you the secrets, the facts, and the tricks that you almost certainly won't know. We're talking shift in speed, wireless communication protocol, how these tiny little batteries make your gears work, and also how far the wireless signals can actually travel. Those people think I'm an absolute weirdo. Oh my God. It's fair to say that for over 20 years, Shimano has set the benchmark for electronic shifting, a level of precision and quality that is beloved by pro cyclists and anyone lucky enough to have it fitted to their bike. Digital Integrated Intelligence, or DI2 for short, it launched back in 2001, the same year that iPods were flying off the shelves. But wait, you say, it wasn't 2001, it was 2009. Well. Little known fact number one is that whilst most of us associate DI2 with Dura Ace and Pro Riders, it was actually first used in something far more humble and practical. The Nexave C910 group set, which focused on beginner friendly components designed to simplify riding. It had features like automatic shifting and electronically controlled suspension that would automatically adjust according to the road conditions and speed you were cycling at. And even 23 years later, this is still technology that blows most people's minds. And whilst the next A of C910 group set does look its age compared to today's modern offerings, it's technology that should never be overlooked. But in this video, I really want to focus on the latest stats, facts and information on the latest DI2 group set, and information which I think most people still won't know. Now, like pretty much everything in life, even your gears now have an app. And in this case, it's called eTube. And it allows you to do pretty much everything you could ever want to do to your gears, like update the firmware, change the functionality of it, make micro adjustments to the shifting, look at what gears you're using the most, and it will even log fault codes to help with error finding. But one thing it won't do is lubricate your chain. Now, we'll talk more about the app in a minute because first I want to discuss the often misunderstood methods of communication for how the derailleurs and the shifters are linked together. Now, in case you missed the memo, when Shimano launched the latest DI2 group sets, they also changed the method of communication. So now the derailleurs communicate wirelessly to the shifters, which are then linked to a shared battery via a set of cables. And then inside, each individual shifter, you have one of these small little coin cell batteries, a CR1632 to be precise, and they weigh just a couple of grams. So how on earth is it that Shimano make this tiny little coin cell battery last just over a year, perhaps even longer, yet this shared battery that's powering the derailleurs needs to be recharged every few months? It's because the rear derailleur is doing all of the hard work here and acts as the brains of the system and means that the signal strength and power consumption used by the levers can be far, far lower. Not only that, the levers are also incredibly effective at going into a deep sleep or power saving mode when the bike is not used for prolonged periods of time. And then also to save battery power even further, there's a sort of efficient power saving mode when you're still out riding your bike through normal use in between gear shifting to help reduce the power consumption. But this is unnoticeable by the rider. And then when the shifter has gone into that deep sleep mode, it's only reactivated by physically pressing one of the buttons rather than just through motion or vibration. Again, saving precious battery power. Having just said that the derailleurs and shifters communicate wirelessly, there is also still the option to run them hardwired together. And this is gonna yield about a 50% improvement in battery life. And then in the case of the latest Rim Brake 9200 DI2 group set, having them hardwired together is the only way to get that system to work, as I found out a few weeks ago doing my latest bike build series. The communication protocol used to make everything work is something I find incredibly fascinating and also something that Shimano usually keeps a closely guarded secret. But having spoken to some of their tech experts, they've confirmed that the wireless protocol is specifically one developed by them for this application rather than using a wireless communication method that many of us are familiar with, such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi or Ant+. 
The method of communication for the wire connections between the derailleurs and the battery uses something called PLC, which stands for Power Line Communication. So inside your DI2 cable, you've got two smaller individual wires, and it's been this way ever since Dura-Ace DI2 Generation 2, when they moved away from the larger cable, which had five individual wires inside. The two tiny cables inside your DI2 cable transmit power and data simultaneously, as the name suggests, power line communication. This means the derailleurs not only have the data to know what movement to make, they also have the power to make that movement. Now, a common misconception is that the system uses a controlled area network or CAN communication protocol, which relies on binary code. Now, this was also my understanding until I recently spoke to Shimano, but I bet you didn't know that either. Go on, be honest. As one of your main contact points on the bike, there is a lot going on here at the shifters. You've got your brake levers and then six different buttons to choose from. Now, a standard four are set up to operate your gears. Two on the right-hand lever are for the rear derailleur and two on the left-hand lever are for the front derailleur. Plus, you have two hidden buttons located here on the tops. Now, these have actually been a feature ever since DI2 Durace launched back in 2009. So perhaps not really all that new or hidden anymore. You can actually change and assign all of these buttons to do different features and functions using the eTube app. This is something you've been able to do for a little while now, but the latest feature to be released is something called Front Shift Next. Now this means you can assign just one button to operate the front derailleur and then whatever chainring you're in, when you press that one button, the bike will automatically know to shift into the chainring that you're not currently using. This is brilliant because it frees up an extra button to be used for additional functions and features, like controlling your head unit, for example. This is not only a neat but simple solution, but it could be brilliant for amateur or pro riders alike. In the pro ranks, perhaps really useful for riders to be able to control the front and rear derailleurs from both levers, meaning you could have a hand free to eat or drink or talk on the team radio. But also for an amateur rider, it can be brilliant because you can change all of your gears whilst approaching a junction and having your arm out to indicate that you're going to turn. Neat and simple solutions here. Now, if we go back to last year's Tour de France, Sai was taking a closer look at the bike of Richard Carapaz and he saw how he had his levers set up with additional sprint shift buttons underneath both of the levers. Now, the reason for this was so that Carapaz could operate both the front and rear derailleur from both the left and right hand shifter. But had something like front shift next been released at the time, well, there'd be no need to use those additional sprint buttons to have that functionality, and you could use them for additional features. Now, for those of you who are major tech nerds, you could use those extra function buttons to control features within your Wahoo head unit, something like turning a GoPro on and off to record or scrolling through to your favorite Taylor Swift song on Spotify. The hidden buttons, though, unfortunately are not a thing on the latest 105 DI2, because instead of having one coin cell battery in each of your shifters, there's now two, giving you, you guessed it, double the battery life. However, if you set up the front shift next feature and have one button front derailleur operation, well, it frees up another button on your left-hand shifter to use for some of those additional features. So that's a fair bit covered on the electronic side of things, but what about the hardware side of the group sets? Well, whilst the materials, shapes, and weights all differ between the DI2 ranges of 105, Ultegra, and Dura-Ace, the electrical wizardry inside remains fairly consistent throughout. At the rear of the bike, Shimano say the internals of Ultegra and Durace are nearly identical, and it's only 105 that differ slightly. And then at the front derailleur, things are pretty similar again. Ultegra and Durace are near identical, but 105 is much closer to that of the previous generation, 9100 Durace DI2 group set, which does mean the latest Ultegra and Durace shifts are noticeably faster on the front derailleur. The speed of the gear shift is something that will always amaze people when they first use electronic group sets. And Shimano has extensively tested the previous generation 9100 group set against this, the latest generation 9200 group set. And the time taken from pressing the button at the lever to the derailleurs completing their electronic movement has improved significantly. We've got an improvement of 58% of the rear derailleur and 45% of the front derailleur. That's just 0.08 seconds at the rear 
and 0.19 seconds at the front derailleur, which is faster than the blink of an eye. Do I need this technology? No. Do I want this technology? Absolutely yes. As cool as those stats are, I think as cycling enthusiasts, we can all appreciate that the speed of our front derailleur shifts, well, it isn't really necessarily the factor holding back our performance. But in the world of pro racing, these things do matter. And Shimano works incredibly closely with their sponsored teams and athletes to continually test and develop their products to try to help pro riders win pro races. And it also helps us as consumers to try to have the best products possible. 78% of the men's pro peloton and 73% of the women's pro peloton are currently using Shimano DI2 group sets. But of those percentages, only five men's teams and three women's teams are officially sponsored by Shimano. So that leads me to think that the other teams are perhaps using Shimano out of choice and perhaps at their own cost. So that's some of the more nerdy techie details covered off. But what about the fun stuff? Like how far the DI2 wireless signals can actually travel? So on a normal bike, we're talking at about one meter between the shifters and the derailleurs. A tandem, maybe closer to two meters. And Shimano say that tandems should be no issue at all for wireless DO2. So let's keep walking away and shifting until things stop working. It's still working. It is. Still working? Yep. Okay, still going? Still going. Okay, I'm gonna have to go into the bushes. So it's not what I expected. Still working? Still working. Uh, oh. Still working? Still working. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna have to find somewhere bigger to go. Yeah, it stopped. This time I went far enough that the microphone lost range and cut out. So let's measure that final distance. Watch out for dog poos. Those people think I'm an absolute weirdo. Oh my God. <laughs> 58.6 meters is the wireless distance that we found to be the cutoff point. Okay, clearly that wasn't how the system was ever designed or intended to be used, but it's nice to know just in case you ever really feel the need to build a bike that's over 50 meters long. Anyway, that's a nice fun way to end a bit more of a nerdy deeper dive into everything to do with Shimano Di2. Hope you enjoyed the video and had fun along the way. If you do have any nerdy facts or stats of your own, please do get involved in the comments section down below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe to GCN Tech to help support our channel. Right, I'm out of here. See you later, bye.